For Westerners, this is most probably different. Challenging. Challenging. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised by my challenge. It's quite a generous serve, isn't it? Hi, we're the Flying Finnies, a 50-something couple on their way to visit 60 countries before we turn 60. We're currently in country number 7, Taiwan. In this video, we embark on our first food challenge to try some of Taiwan's most famous delicacies while pushing ourselves way outside our comfort zone. Join us to see who wins the challenge. We're at the Rao Street Night Market, which has a whole lot of inexpensive and delicious street food that will inspire you to come and visit the amazing city of Taipei. So it's night number five in tonight. Ta yeah, it's our last night in Taipei, um, which we're a bit sad about, but what that does mean though, is that we get one last chance to try a night market. So we are at night market number five, five. <laughs> for this trip, which is awesome. So we're currently just outside of Songshan station, the MRT station, at a night market called the? Rao, Rao, something like that, R-A-O-H-E, and I apologize for the pronunciation. Now, this particular night market, as with all, have a few specialisations and it might lead us to having a little bit of a challenge night tonight. <laughs> We've been talking about things like you know, intestines and stinky tofu, which I think a lot of Western tourists talk about. And I think tonight might be the night to try it out. I've been trying to get myself accustomed to the scent of stinky tofu, thinking that that would mean that I would find it easier to eat, but as we walked to the MRT station today, we went down one street where there were multiple restaurants cooking stinky tofu, and I realised that I don't think my strategy has worked. I'm probably more sensitive to that scent than I was at the beginning of the week. But really, this is about trying different things, and I think that when you go to different countries, if you don't take the opportunity to try different things, well, you're most probably missing out, and tonight, we're not going to miss out. <laughs> Are you going to try stinky tofu? Oh, well, we might be tossing head or tails for that. Because I'm not trying intestines. <laughs> then I guess you're the stinky tofu person. Uh, okay, let's go do it. We'll give it a go. <laughs> something else that we have to try. It's called a pepper cake. I read that in the guide as well. <laughs> we are starting with something more familiar. And while we haven't had one of these before, it was written up in the Michelin guide as well as a don't miss this. And the stall is literally right as you come through the entrance to the market. It's right there. And I was worried they were going to sell out, so we're going to try this first. It was 60 Taiwanese dollars, so what's that? About three dollars Australian? It's quite a generous sale, look. It's got pork inside, it was cooked in that tandoor style oven, and it's really crispy. I guess there's pepper in there if it's called a pepper cake as well. Mm. Can you hear that? Is that crispy? Super crunchy. A bit like a meat pie. Now my fellow Australians will know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to show you what's inside there. There's a big patty of minced pork and green onions and pepper and other spices. I haven't quite got to that meaty part yet because it's you can see the steam coming off it. It's super hot. Whew. That's why I haven't got my glasses on because they'll steam up. It looks so good. The meat is really juicy. You can see it now that I've bitten into it. And yes, a lot of black pepper. It's not burning spicy, but it's kind of sitting in the back of my throat. Oh, hi, puppy! <laughs> um, everyone brings their dogs to the night market and bring them in a doggy stroller. So the pepper was kind of sits in the back of your throat. That's kind of catching my throat a little bit, but it is absolutely delicious. Definitely belongs in the Michelin Guide. Whether it belongs alongside Stinky Tofu in the guide is yet to be determined. But I'm gonna have one more bite before I hand it over to Graham. Just letting this waft across, the smell is delicious. It really is. I'm quite looking forward to this.
So we've got a range of different meats here. Some of it I can easily identify. There's some beef here, of course, some tripe. I'm gathering that that's intestine here. Some of it I'm not sure about, but the smell coming off is, really is mouth watering. So I'm quite looking forward to this challenge. A little bit of beef. Which is just so tender, it's mouth watering. Bit of the intestine here. Mm. It's fatty, it's not chewy. It's got a really, really subtle taste to it. It's quite nice. The tripe. Mm. It's a different type of taste. A bit of chilli with that one. So it's got a bit of kick to it. And then a bit of marrow. I've had this in some of the other soups that we've had here in Taiwan. It's quite good. So all in all, it's delicious. I like it. Yeah, put this in here. Get some of that sauce. So this is the piece de resistance. I, I think that I've actually got off pretty well in this challenge because I've really enjoyed the last dish. For Westerners, this is most probably different. Challenging. Challenging. And I'm not sure exactly how you eat this, whether you just pick it up and chew off the bone. It tastes fine. It's most probably more the texture and the thought. But I'm sure that there's a lot of goodness in this leg. And it is actually both juicy and delicious. Nice and peppery. I'm assuming that was a duck foot that Graham just ate because it was so large. And honestly, it looked like a little mini dinosaur that you were eating. I felt like I was in Jurassic Park or something. So that dish was quite filling. I, I enjoyed it. Would I have it again? Yes, I would. Uh, the chicken feet or the duck feet, most probably not. But the rest of it, fantastic. We were actually sitting down beside uh, a couple from Melbourne who were also um, here enjoying Taiwan. And we were just talking about... We don't see these types of night markets in Australia, and I think that it's um, it's disappointingly so, because there's just so much vibrance here, um, so much energy, um, and fantastic food. I've just figured out the difference in this challenge for Graham and I. So, what Graham just ate was probably unpalatable food that is made palatable through a beautiful sauce and a stewing process, right? What I'm going to do is the opposite. The taking something palatable, tofu, and actually stewing it in something which to me is very unpalatable. <laughs> Unusual. Untried. For me. You never know. You yeah. might love it. I, I may. I may. Anyway, I'm rethinking this. Graves now done his half of the challenge. What's, what's the penalty if I don't do my Sorry, part? You're, of the you're not going to wimp out on me now, are you? <laughs> There's all these yummy, delicious things to eat here that I really want to try instead of tofu. All right, Trace. Uh, and time. tell us what's going on. It's time. I can't avoid this any longer. I decided to do it earlier in the night rather than later so I can just get it over with. I bought myself a drink to wash out the flavour afterwards. In the off chance that I don't like it, you know, just in case. What are the chances that I don't like it? So, this stall? Well, this is the one that's written up in the Michelin Guide, so we figured, if you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> I hope they're not offended if it gets wasted, though. Have you got a selection? The choices are endless, you know. You can just go plain old stinky tofu, or I can go stinky tofu with duck blood and chitterlings gets better for me. I'm just going to go plain old stinky tofu. It's 
quite a generous serve, isn't it? <laughs> this one actually has um, a mild smell, I would say. So, until you pick it up. Oh, it's like I, it's like I released the vapor. I'm rethinking this. I kind of wish I was sitting down and I could hold my nose <laughs> like a child. <laughs> Might dip it in the sauce first. <laughs> He's laughing at me, that man going by. <laughs> Actually, it tastes okay. <laughs> it does smell horrendous, but you can't taste that. You honestly can't taste that smell. It's quite bland. It's hard to eat, but it's just, it's actually, you cannot taste that stench, which is so weird because usually it's the opposite. The smell usually makes things taste, like the smell is 90% of the experience usually, right? I wouldn't choose, I wouldn't buy it again, but it's probably a bit like Vegemite for non-Australians, you know, they, <laughs> to us, we really like Vegemite, but to people who weren't raised eating Vegemite on toast for breakfast, it has a really strong, pungent um, smell. The little pickled vegetables are really good on the side, crunchy pickled vegetables, spicy. I'm pleasantly surprised by my challenge. managed to find the herbal stewed ribs um, and we believe that there are a whole lot of medicinal herbs that are stewed up within the broth itself and the ribs looks like the meat is just falling off the bones. Just been up having a look at how they're made and um, again it just looks delicious. It's served with some sauce here which is actually quite mild it's not spicy at all just very flavoursome so quite looking forward to this because the meat is just falling at the bone ribs has been a bit of a favourite since we were in America and we learned how to slow cook ribs on the barbecue there just a different variation I'm going to try a little bit of the broth Oh, that's that's just delicious. I think um, broth has been one of the absolute standouts here in Taiwan. Everywhere we've gone and had, whether it's beef noodle soup or pork broth soup, broth has just been amazing, and this is no different. You think? I'm thinking that I'm not going to give it back to you. <laughs> Stock's delicious. Tastes a bit like coriander. Chinese five spice. Yeah, Chinese five spice again. That's kind of been the the smell of Taiwan for me, apart from tofu, is Chinese five spice. Lots of things has Chinese five spice in it. Hey Chris, might get you some eyebrows like that. <laughs> So we've just walked all the way down the street on one side of the market and it's quite long. So let's go and see if we can now find something a bit more substantial for me to have for dinner. Because Graham's really full because he's eaten all the food that he was challenged to eat. I on the other hand have not eaten very much so let's go and find something yummy. I found something I'm after. It even has vegetables in it. One. Two hundred? Yeah. I changed my mind when I found out it was ten dollars. I didn't want it that much. <laughs> That's quite expensive for um, street market food. Very expensive. Yeah, actually. I'm resisting the urge to get another black pepper cake because it was so delicious. I feel like I should get something different though. We found Tracy at the end of the line. I think it's like a it's like a pork sandwich in a weird way. A little pastry thing that I'm going to have to fill me up. Looks like a pastry shell that's open and looks like stewed pork inside. This is literally burning my hands. I must have this affinity for meats wrapped in a pastry because that's what I've chosen again I just realised. 
It's almost like, not roti, it's crispier than roti. It's really layered. There's lots and lots of layers of pastry. And then you get a chili sauce if you want it spicy. And then that beautiful stewed meat that's mixed with some um, green pepper, capsicum. And then some of the gravy from the meat um, is on top. It looks incredible. And I'm sorry, you, again, you can't smell it because that's kind of 90% of the joy of this. The pastry and the bread on these things at these markets is incredible. The quality of food coming out of a street stall like this, and I know they do one thing and they do it really well, but it's so good. Australian meat pies have nothing on this. We need to um, up our game, Australia. So tonight I think I get to claim the victor's crown for uh, some of the most interesting dishes that we've had so far here in Taiwan. And that means I get to choose dessert. We've opted for this Vietnamese whole range of different yummy desserts, most of them jellied with a sprinkling of peanuts on top and some sweet milk running all over it. We were asked whether we would like two of them. I'm not sure that we can fit one between the two of us, but let's see how we go. Despite us commenting on how big that dessert was to share, we managed to eat it all. It was actually quite light. It's like a sweet coconut milk with just little pieces of jelly, some fresh mango, some light cheese, and there were some red beans in there. So it's actually quite refreshing trying to figure out how to make something similar at home. It is definitely time to leave this market because our tummies are full. We've challenged ourselves and it is time to go back for our last night of sleep before heading to a new country tomorrow where we might get more great food and probably more great desserts like this. <laughs> In our next and last video from Taiwan, we show you what you can't afford to miss if you visit this amazing island, except maybe for an earthquake. We're having an earthquake. Okay, we're still alive. The building's still standing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave us a comment, and subscribe to the channel.